thank you for being here and welcome to District 5020's Rotary Membership Quarterly Online Training. This is a building membership through new club models and I'm your training leader. My name is Corey Laparty. I'm the District Membership Development Chair for District 5020 and on your screen you should be able to see uh, my email there if you need to reach me for any reason. Now tonight if you want to ask questions uh, I'm going to ask that you uh, mute yourself as we're recording so the audio is better and you can raise your hand and then we'll unmute you, unmute you and uh, uh, that will let me know you have a question. And questions can be answered as we go if possible and we're going to have a Q&A and some time at the end for questions later on. And they're public and the webinar is recorded so just know that when you ask your questions that these are public questions and they will be archived in perpetuity. Building membership through new club models. Uh, first, we'll talk about why we have new club models. We'll talk about how does Rotary International view membership. We'll talk about what are some new membership types. What are some new club models? We'll have a Q&A session, and then we'll review some of the upcoming 5020 membership trainings. I'm sure you're all familiar with the Rotary brand experience, and uh, you know, Rotary Club is meeting every week meeting at the same venue every week. They have guest speakers. You have a president and a secretary and a treasurer and you have directors and you have committees. Your club probably has flags and banners. You might have yearly dues and meal costs. You don't spend much time or money on promotion of your club and everyone changes roles every year. Um, think to yourself, how many of you experience some or all of those in your club? Well, if you do, that was also Rotary in 1905. So perhaps our clubs need to look at uh, new ways of doing things. Now why new club models? Well, Rotary received a lot of feedback in the early 2000s that showed that prospective and current members of Rotary, uh, younger Rotarians required more flexibility in their Rotary Club membership. Um, in 2007, Rotary started pilot club projects uh, and it was first on medium frequency, which allowed the pilot clubs to meet at different times and different schedules than they were regular meeting. And this pilot ran from June 30th of 2013, or from 2007 to June 30th of 2013. After that, uh, Rotary also decided to start in November 2010. Uh, the Rotary approved four new pilot club options, and these ran from July of 2011 to June of 2014. The four types were associate member, corporate member, innovative and flexible club, and satellite club. And my club participated in the corporate membership pilot, and I'm sure there were other clubs in the district uh, that participated in those pilot projects as well. Now in 2016, and you're probably aware, um, you might not be, that the Council on Legislation gave clubs freedom to create clubs and membership types to meet the needs of their communities. And Rotary found over these 15, 16 years of doing these pilots and checking out and doing uh, the Siegel and Gale report and all these uh, uh, surveys and interviews, uh, this is what uh, was being successful for clubs and this is what uh, club members wanted in order to see their clubs grow and prosper. So now we have lots of different flexible types of clubs and types of memberships in clubs. So how does Rotary view membership? Well, for Rotary, there's really only two kinds of members. There's active members and there's honorary members. Active members pay dues to Rotary International and they also pay dues to our district. And uh, those members receive the Rotarian Magazine and they're voting members of Rotary. Now, honorary members are everything else that doesn't pay dues to RI and to the district and those members don't pay dues but they can't vote and they can't hold office in a club they don't have classifications but they all are entitled to come to all the meetings and wear rotary memorabilia and badges um, but that doesn't make you a Rotarian in other clubs um, except you have the right to visit other clubs. You can bring guests, uh, but honorary members are not recognized as full members under RI, and RI doesn't recognize what other clubs have chosen to do. Now, clubs can create 
as many kinds of membership types as they want, and we'll talk about some of those in a little bit now. Uh, but they got to fall into one of the two categories to be recognized by Rotary International. Either they're active members or they're honorary members. So let's do a survey and see if we can pull this off. Has your club created any new types of membership? And I'm going to launch the poll here. So you should have the opportunity to vote now. And I can share the results so uh, you can all see those. I'm not sure if this is uh, surprising to anybody or not, but uh, uh, it's nice to see that we've got a mix of different types of memberships here. Uh, the different types of Rotary membership. Uh, we have uh, associate or introductory memberships, uh, corporate memberships, family memberships, young professionals memberships, satellite memberships, and then everything else I would say falls into other kinds of memberships. Now, if you see up there, the Rotary Club of Central Oceans, Toms River, New Jersey. And if we thought we had some long names in our district, well, there's a good long one for you. Uh, you can click on that link and you'll have this presentation later. And that'll take you to a Rotary International article on their club innovations and the three different types of memberships they have. So if you're looking to check out some different type of memberships, it's a good article that explains kind of their dues and processes for their different kinds of memberships. Let's look at associate memberships and how they might work. Uh, some clubs use these associate memberships as a trial period for new potential Rotarians. Um, they allow people to attend meetings usually, including socials and community service projects. Uh, they're recognized at club meetings and functions by wearing name badges, same as the other members. Um, they're also allowed and usually are given a rotary pin uh, and uh, they're able to go to other club meetings and introduce potential new members to the club. This associate member is often a no charge or low charge fee to get people into uh, Rotary. Now, if these memberships don't include the fee, then Rotary International considers them to be honorary members and you'll have to list them in your uh, Rotary as honorary members. And if you do charge, a fee and you pay your rotary dues, then they would be uh, full members and rotary would recognize them. So that is associate members. Now corporate membership, and over half of you say you have corporate members or a corporate membership policy as part of your club. So uh, most of you are probably familiar with this, but um, basically it allows the club to connect with corporations in the community and set up some sort of mutual benefit between the club and the company. And there's a couple of different models. One is the primary member of the corporation pays dues and then the other members don't, uh, but they also aren't technically uh, active members. They would be listed as honorary members in RI. Um, it's uh, a way for more people to participate in the club, uh, but the corporation really just pays for that one member. And then that's uh, the only member that is a voting member, an active member, uh, and is recognized as a full member by Rotary International. Uh, the second model, uh, or something similar to this, is typically where the club charges a fee or a range of fees for a certain number of corporate members, uh, anywhere from three to five, one to four. Uh, typically, two to three members is where the um, corporation starts to see a discount in dues. Uh, it allows for corporate members to be full active members of the club, and uh, these uh, are the types of models that typically came out of the pilot project because you were looking for ways to gain more attendance from members and a lot of times corporation uh, heads cannot always make all of our Rotary Club meetings. So if they had multiple members of their company in a club, then uh, they could change off who was coming to meeting and they would get full credit for everybody attending every week that at least one of the members from the corporation attended the club. So family memberships. So some clubs use family memberships as a way to alleviate the costs of Rotary's own household. And I saw there was a, at least a couple there that uh, you said you had family memberships. Uh, typically, you pay a reduced fee for more than one family member or share in the meal costs by alternating attendance of family members. Um, they're recognized at club meetings, they're full members, um, and they attend meetings in all clubs. So this type of membership is typically a discount 
on the club's part, uh, but uh, they pay full Rotary dues, they pay full district dues, and therefore they're recognized as full Rotarians uh, by Rotary International. Now, young professionals memberships, some clubs are using these as a way to alleviate the costs on people that are new to their careers or new to Rotary, and maybe they've come out of a Rotaract club, and now they're asked to pay to be a member of Rotary because Rotaractors actually don't pay a cost unless their particular club has a small dues fee, uh, but Rotary International doesn't take dues, and our district does not take dues from Rotaractors. So typically clubs set this up to collect a fee for a period of time so that these new members can get acclimated, uh, acclimated to Rotary and their jobs. Um, they're recognized at all meetings, they're full members. Um, so it's the same uh, in Rotary's eyes, these are full Rotary members. So we'll move on to our next survey and that was uh, kind of our section on uh, the different types of memberships. And the questions are, or the answers are no, not yet yes, we are looking into it, or yes, we are a new club model. And I see that we have a couple of new club uh, models here, so we'll definitely wanna get your feedback as we move forward. Let's go ahead and share those results. It looks like four of you uh, have not experimented, three are looking into it, and two say, yes, we are a new model club. So let's look at some new model clubs. We have e-clubs, we have satellite clubs, we have passport clubs, corporate clubs, and then what Rotary is kind of lumped as lifestyle clubs. So e-clubs typically meet online. They have members from different communities and they use the network of Rotary to do service. And we actually have a Rotary e-club in our district. It's the Rotary e-club of District 5020. Uh, their link is there down at the bottom. And uh, they are out of the Tumwater area for their home base, but they have members uh, in both countries and I think a few uh, around the world. Uh, this club was started uh, when the uh, person who started it was looking to expand uh, into a new Rotary Club and do something online. And so he looked at all the Rotarians that had left the area and sent an email out to them and said, hey, would you be a part of a Rotary Club? Uh, online if you uh, um, can't make it to the meeting anymore you don't live in the area and uh, that club started with uh, 25 members satellite clubs satellite clubs are actually part of a regular club they're just a satellite so they have an alternative meeting day or time they're a way to attract different members that maybe can't make the meeting time uh, they're a way to be innovative and uh, do different things um, it is like I said an extreme extension of a current Rotary Club, uh, and it's often an incubator for a new Rotary Club to be chartered after some success. Uh, it's a way to re-energize Rotary, and it, as you can see there, uh, what will soon be our newest satellite club in this district up in the Usulit Tofino area, and I'm sure John has lots of information he can share later on about that as he's pictured there in the picture. This uh, uh, new uh, uh, satellite club, I believe, has 14 members right now. So it'll be a great addition to our district. Also, if you're curious about satellite clubs, uh, District 5100 has a couple of good, strong satellite clubs and they're just down in the Portland area. They're the district right below us. Uh, and they have a couple of uh, members uh, on their membership committee that know all about satellite clubs. So they're also a great resource. Passport clubs, uh, we also have one of those in Pierce County, Passport Club of Pierce County. Now these were started uh, down, uh, I, I wanna say Southern California or Northern California, might've been Sacramento area. And uh, basically they only hold a few in-person meetings each year. Uh, I think our uh, club actually holds a, a monthly, regular type of club meeting and then they have socials and service projects. Uh, some passport clubs only meet quarterly. Um, members are local people who wanna make a difference and they have Rotary's values, but they can't always make meetings. So they do their service through service in different groups and programs. Um, the idea of the passport came from the idea that the first Rotary clubs rotated meetings. And so most of these passport clubs uh, rotate where they actually meet. And I know the Pierce County uh, Passport Club does that. And this club is designed uh, often for former or current Rotary members uh, who are looking for a non-traditional way to meet and get together. So that's kind of the gist of a passport club. And then corporate clubs. 
Now, the first corporate club of its kind is the Rotary Club of Bentley, Cheshire. They started as a satellite club uh, of a, another club in Cheshire uh, in England, and it includes employees and community members of Bentley Motors. Uh, the club alternates meetings between Bentley Motors and local pubs and restaurants, and then it gives uh, the club and the corporation a way to leverage corporate giving in the community so that uh, not only does the corporation donate, but the corporation actually does projects and gets involved and uses Rotary's power uh, to maximize the efforts uh, that the company would make on its own. And uh, there is a nice article about that at the link below that you can check out later on. Uh, but uh, we're gonna watch a video now uh, that explains a bit about this club. From what I understand, the Bentley Cheshire Rotary Club is the first uh, corporate rotary club in the UK and uh, we're very proud to be that. I'm Sally Hepton and I'm a member of uh, Bentley Cheshire Rotary and uh, I'm also responsible for corporate social responsibility at Bentley Motors in Crewe. We were really looking to find a way to get our colleagues to engage in the community and to volunteer and this has really taken off. My name is Elena Thomas. I work as a buyer in purchasing department and I'm the president of the Rotary Club of Bentley Cheshire. Our average age is 43. We have 12 different nationalities in the club. My name is Sarah Newcomb and I'm the secretary of the Bentley Cheshire Rotary Club and I work in the project team at Bentley Motors. We play hard, we work hard, we fundraise, we have fun, we socialise, we do lots of volunteering work in the community. Our club project, The Street Kitchen, is all about helping the homeless. Lady May! <laughs> May! Oh, bless you, darling. Bless you. <laughs> we started it about September, getting ready for um, the cold weather. The Rotary Club of Bentley Cheshire has really made a difference. It's really raised the profile of the homeless in our local area, showing that there is an issue and we really as a town need to do something the community needs to pull together to, to help these vulnerable people. My name's Michael, been homeless for the last three years. You get clothes, hot food. It's making a right good difference because obviously at the end of the day, people who haven't got things, they can come in and get it. And if they haven't had a square meal in, in week, and there you go, we've got a square meal. I would recommend the Rotary Clubs up and down the country to anybody. Whatever age you are, whatever skill sets you've got, we can use you. Rotary needs everybody and everybody's welcome. So that was the Bentley Cheshire Rotary Club. It's the first corporate Rotary Club, the first Rotary Club of its kind. And now we'll look at uh, another kind of Rotary Club. So lifestyle clubs are clubs that are created to meet a community need. Sometimes it's around needing a different meeting location, different time of day, a uh, way to reduce costs or do different projects. Uh, the Rotary Club of Maidenhead Bridge is an interesting Rotary Club. They actually meet uh, on the weekends. So let's take a look at a video uh, that shows off their club. I'd like you all to join me in welcoming our 46th and 47th member to the club, Tilly and Ashna. If you'd like to both come forward. We meet on Sunday mornings in a coffee shop uh, twice a month. Uh, we don't have a meal. It's, it's, yeah, it's a casual coffee club meeting. It's your certificate. Your, your branded mug and your pin. And just a... <laughs> we think it's important that children come along, and particularly as a parent, um, for them to learn that they should be giving back to their community to help make a difference. I was a Rotary actor before, hit the ripe old age of 30 and realised I had to move on. And whilst the Rotary clubs in Mainhead were doing amazing things, they met at lunchtime or in the evening. And with a then one-year-old, that wasn't really convenient for us. So I got my friends together that used to be in Rotary and that's where Mainhead Bridge came forward, really. Decided to do something different. Our clothing, 
Uh, this is really about our club because we are working Rotarians and we were out in the community working rather than sitting in a meeting. We decided to launch something called Pimp My Community, which essentially is working with charities that are very small and perhaps just starting out. So we meet with them, find out what they need, and then give three free hours of our professional time to really kind of crack on and get their charity going and in the right direction. We are very involved in a local food bank that a couple of years ago was in basically in a cupboard somewhere and is now in its own shop and it helps probably about 200 families in the community. This club is great for us because we now have a small person to consider who's welcome at meetings um, and the club is seen to be flexible that we can come along to whatever we need to. It just offers so many opportunities for, for helping in all kinds of different ways and, and ways which I really want Matthew to, to benefit from. Is it good fun? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And what do you learn? Helping other people and making them join the club. Good work. <laughs> Future membership and marketing chairman right here. <laughs>So this is an interesting kind of club, as I said, and it showed in the video. They meet in a coffee shop. They meet on the weekend. And uh, when we receive Rotary leads from Rotary International, uh, weekends are actually one of the times that's most requested by non-Rotarians. They actually don't know that most of our clubs don't meet on the weekends. Uh, so they're often looking for evenings, and they're looking for weekend clubs. So before we wrap up here, I just wanted to point out upcoming... Uh, district membership trainings. We have our district membership summits starting in 2019. We have our first summit on January 12th in Canada, Victoria, at the Grand Pacific Hotel from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. That's facilitated by myself and we have presenters Lauren Curt Lorna Curtis and Dennis Perry and they are on the District 502 on membership committee and this will be uh, something that we'll be sending out probably December 1st so you can go on and sign up for that and then our next quarterly online training is January 23rd 6 p.m. and it's attracting younger members to Rotary and this was a, a topic that came up at our last membership committee and uh, from that uh, we're bringing in a feature presentation by District 5100 young professional specialist and assistant governor she's passed president of the Seaside Rotary Club Raven Russell so that ought to be a really good event. So thank you for joining us tonight or checking this out online and uh, this has been building membership through new club models.